In this video, I will show you how you can AI in paint videos using Stable Diffusion. We will use Blender and a Blender plugin that works together with Stable Diffusion that is running on Google Colab. At the time of recording, Google Colab is free to use for everyone, so that means that the whole setup will be free to use for everyone. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the necessary links from this video are down in the description, and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. If you like AI-generated content, then you will definitely like the sponsor of this video. Thanks to Creative Fabrica for sponsoring this video. If you are looking for creative digital art and graphics, then you should definitely check out Creative Fabrica. It is one of the largest marketplaces for creators and designers, with a library of over 6 million fonts, graphics and digital print-on-demand assets. Recently, Creative Fabrica launched their first AI image generator called CF Spark. Using CF Spark, you can create images that are 100% unique, you can download your own unique creations or publish them on the platform for paid use by other members and that way monetize your AI creations. You can try it out for free or with a monthly $9 subscription. With the subscription you get 1000 speed credits that allow you to jump to the top of the queue and get your AI images first without waiting in line. In addition to regular discounts and daily deals, they also have a contest where you can win store credits with your AI designs created in CF Spark. So if you are interested, you can check out the link in the upper right corner or down in the description and unleash your creativity today with Creative Fabrica. On this repository on GitHub, you can find two plugins, a Blender plugin and a GIMP plugin, and also the Stable Diffusion backend that's running on Google Colab. And in this video, we will use the Stable Diffusion backend together with the Blender plugin. I already installed the plugin on my machine, and also the Stable Diffusion backend is running here in the background. So in this video, I will skip the plugin installation, I will also skip the Google Colab setup. In a previous video, I showed you how to install the plugin and also how to set up Google Colab step by step. So if you are interested how to set everything up, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. As said, I already did that, so let's go over to Blender. Here I am in Blender and this is the version 3.4.1. Now the first thing that I will do, I will go to Edit and Preferences. And now here under Add-ons, you can see that I already installed the AI Render plugin, the patched version. And if I expand it, then under Stable Diffusion Backend, you will need to select Google Colab. And then under Backend URL, you need to paste in the link from Google Colab, like that. And you should be good to go. Now, as I said, if you don't know how this works, then you can check out my previous video. The link is down in the description. We can close that. Now we want to edit a video, so I will change the editor type to Movie Clip Editor and open my video clip, this one here, and open. This is my clip, let's play it. If I drag the cursor back, just the C and the windsurfers at the horizon, and that's it. As you saw, the clip is very short, only 150 frames at 30 frames per second, this gives us 5 seconds, and the frame size is 512 by 512. Since we will use Stable Diffusion for in-painting, we are also limited by this size here. So let's see how this works. I will zoom in a bit. Let's say I want to remove the wind surfers from this video here. So those are very small objects, there is nothing complicated in the background, this should be very easy to do. So first what we need to do, we need to mask those wind surfers. And since they are moving throughout the video, the mask needs to follow them. And that means that we need to track them somehow. So inside the clip editor, make sure you have tracking up here selected. And now let's jump to the beginning of the clip with this button right here. So we are at the first frame. First let's track this one, hold control and click on it. Now go to track and here you can see the area that will be tracked. So I will look at this and move the mouse to the tracker, press the S key to scale. And now as I scale, if you look to the right, you can see how the area gets scaled. And I actually want to zoom out a bit and apply it, just so the area is a bit bigger, so with this I hope it will be easier to track, and then go to track, and let's track the whole clip, click on this button here. Alright, we reached the last frame, let's also limit the clip to 150, so we don't get out of this range, and if I move the cursor to the left, then you can see the results of the tracking, and again I'm actually looking at this one as I scroll, if the tracker is at the right position, 
So from the beginning till the end, it looks actually very good. Perfect. So I'm actually very satisfied with this one and I will lock it. Now this is just a quick info how to track objects in Blender, not the full tracking tutorial. But for in-painting a video, tracking and masking is very important, so that's why I'm showing you this. Now I will do the same for the rest of the windsurfers, so we need to track all of them. So let's do this quickly. Alright, all of them are tracked and now we need to mask them. So up here, where it says tracking, select mask. And now let's start with this one. I will zoom in, select add, circle. And now the circle is added right here at the corner. So press G and let's move it to the marker. Now let's zoom in, press S and let's scale the mask and move it a bit into position. Maybe scale it on the X axis. This should be fine. And now to make sure that the whole mask is selected, press A and then shift select the marker and press Ctrl P. Now if you go to mask here, you should see that this mask layer is parented to the tracker. And while we are here, let's also rename this one. And now if I zoom out and move the cursor, you can see that the mask is following the tracker. And that's what we want. Back to the beginning, let's lock this layer mask as well. And now I will do the same also for the rest of the trackers. Alright, I'm done with all four and they are following the trackers. Perfect. Now let's prepare this one for rendering. First I will give this mask a name. Let's call it Surfers. And I will switch the editor to Video Sequencer. Here select Sequencer and Preview. Make sure that you are at the first frame or just click on this button here. Now go to Add, Clip. This is my clip. Here it is. It is a bit small, but let's fix that. Go to Output Properties. We know the frame rate is 30 frames per second. And the resolution is 512 by 512. All right, this looks better. Yes, definitely. Now let's zoom out a bit. So here we can see the clip. Let's click on it and let's bring the numbers panel out. Then go to modifiers, add strip modifier. We want a mask, again mask. And here let's select the surface mask. And now you can see only the surfers are selected. So we need to somehow invert the mask because we want to remove those. Go back to the clip editor. Here it is. And now to invert each mask layer, select the layer and click on this icon here. And let's do this for all. And in addition, we need to set the blend to multiply on all the layers except for the first one. This one should be merge add. All right, let's check the sequencer again, video sequencer. And let's refresh with control R. Now this looks better. And now with all the objects masked out, we are finally ready for in-painting. First under Output Properties, I will make this one a bit bigger. Under Output, make sure that file format is set to PNG and also that RGBA is selected. Because we need alpha and the transparent areas for in-painting, in our case those four areas. And then go to Render, Enable AI Render, scroll a bit down, we don't need a style but we need advanced options and we need operation and animation. For the model we want in painting, so select in paint. Also let's write a prompt, which will be in my case clear blue sea horizon. I will remove the random seed and set a fixed one, let's say 10,000, because I want each frame to be in painted with the same seed. Then I will set strength to nine and steps to 10 because I don't want to wait too long and also those are very small areas so this shouldn't be a problem with small steps. Then I want to define an output path for the animation so I will select this folder and accept and now the render animation button was activated it will render 150 frames so that means each frame will be sent to stable diffusion to the back end the frame will be in painted and then sent back to this folder. Also make sure that the start frame is at frame 1 and that the end frame matches the length of your clip, which is 150 in my case. You can also see the area matches the clip size. So I'm good to go and let's try it out. Render animation. This one now switched to a new workspace, AI render, and here we got our first frame. And as you can see, without any surfers. If I check Google Colab, here you can see the progress of each frame. And now the frame was sent back to Blender, and here comes the next frame. Let's check the output folder. Here is the output folder and as you can see we are getting each frame back 
without the surfers. So let's wait for the end result. Finished all 150 frames. Now let's see how this looks like. Go back to Blender, back to the default layout and back to the first frame. And now let's add image sequence. Here they are. And now let's sort them by name. Now select the first one and let's go to the last one. Press shift and select the last one and add image strip. Here it is. Let's see how it looks like. Actually pretty good. No boats, no windsurfers, just a clear horizon. Now this is the original. And now this is the in-painted. Now maybe you can see the quality of this one isn't as good as the original because we only used 10 steps for each frame for in-painting. But overall I'm satisfied with the result. Now before I render this out to a video file, I just want to mention that this was a really easy example. The objects that we masked are really small, you have a clear background, basically nothing in the front, and we also just removed objects. It's a completely different story if you try to replace them with something else. Replacing objects on a single image works really well with stable diffusion, but here you have a sequence of frames, a sequence of images. You will get a slightly different object for each frame. And also if the masked area is bigger, making in-painting consistent throughout the frames is even harder. And that's why this clip was a perfect example. You have small objects that you just want to remove and it did the job really well. So with that said, let's render this one out. Go to first frame, go to output properties. And now under output, instead of file format PNG, select FFmpeg video. For the container we want MPEG4, everything else should be ok. Now select the output folder. I will select the same one where the images are and accept. And now just go to render, render animation. And that's it, let's find the clip. Here is the clip, let's play it. And this is it. And that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It keeps me motivated to make new videos, it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.